And we welcome you to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by The Bible Speaks in Laconia, New Hampshire, USA. I want to greet everyone listening to us by way of the Internet and Public Access TV. Just this week, and we mentioned this in our service this morning, but I want to mention it here on Journey into Faith for those that watch us faithfully. We've been in many countries, but just this last week, we ended up being in Finland, Germany, in India, Ukraine, in Japan, Quebec, Hungary, Austria, and the Netherlands, and a place I could not begin to uh, define because it's an uh, interesting place uh, as far as the word for it is. I I'm going to let sometimes Bob do that for me because he's a linguistic. And, uh, of course, that's nice to say anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't down there. <laughs> but it's so good to be with you all over this beautiful world and to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we intend to have a lot of fun presenting that gospel, but we're also going to be talking about a very serious subject, and that is the message tonight, how people try to escape reality and where they should go for that reality to be dealt with. But first of all, we're going to have two musical presentations. The first will be by Bob Eli. It's called Purpose Song. purpose is to glorify the Lord by reaching out to those who don't know our Lord Jesus by reaching in to love and care for members of God's family by reaching up to thank the Lord and praise his holy name Reach out, outreach to those who don't know our Lord Jesus. Reach in, in reach to care for members of God's family. Reach up, up reach to thank the Lord and praise his name. Our purpose is to glorify the Lord. purpose is to glorify the Lord by reaching out to those who don't know our Lord Jesus by reaching in to love and care for members of God's family by reaching up to thank the Lord and praise his holy name Reach out, outreach to those who don't know our Lord Jesus. Reach in, in reach to care for members of God's family. Reach up, up reach to thank the Lord and praise his name. Our purpose is to glorify the Lord. The Purpose Song, Reach Out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Bob. Right now, we're going to have another beautiful song. This is a hymn entitled, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Eugenia Clark sings it for us. Oh, 
you, Gina. Great song. I'm going to read from the scriptures tonight, starting with 1 Corinthians 10, 5 through 13. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And then Luke chapter 2, verses 34 through 36. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As Pastor Horn comes forward to preach this message titled, Escape, open our minds and our ears and our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. So many people today are trying to escape the trials, tribulations, problems in their life. For centuries, men and women have been trying to escape the realities of life and they shirk their responsibilities to God as a result of that. One of the tricks of Satan is to offer a measure of temporary satisfaction in escape. If I can do this, I won't have to think about what I'm facing, the problems of life. And often what they will do is they will take all kinds of medicine to escape reality. And if they don't find it in medicine, they will try other ways to escape. They will escape in the devil's offer of, if you do this, you'll feel better. The Bible says, there is pleasure in sin for a season. That's an escape. And many people will escape 
by committing uh, what they know is a sin against Almighty God. What is a sin that many Christians commit? They don't read their the Bible. They don't meditate on the Word of God day and night. That's a sin because when God said, read my word, he meant I should read his word. When he says pray, he meant I should pray. It's a sin not to do whatever God has declared in his word for us to do. So they escape in one way or another. Sometimes they find out the reality that that pleasure of sin for a season is only for a season. The Word of God says, be sure your sin will find you out. Many of us have been running away that are watching me on television or the Internet, and they're running away from reality, and they're running into a feel-good society. In other words, if it feels okay, it must be okay. If it feels okay to not go to church, then they will not go to church. They begin to feel they can find a service on television, and that will suffice for them assembling together and doing it much the more. The Word of God tells us we are in need of each other. The Word of God that is given on the Internet or on public access or on TV is a supplement. It is not the assembling of ourselves together. When we do that, we run away, when we run away from what God has planned, we find that it doesn't satisfy, not one moment. Jesus said to us when we're going through a trial, don't run into a synthetic, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How do people try to escape? Well, that's what I want you to see tonight. There is an escape of the imaginations. The Bible says, A heart deviseth, that deviseth wicked imaginations is dangerous. Satan is called the angel of light. He makes something look good that isn't good at all. He makes, a, let's say, a, a food look good and you know that you've been told to stay away from that food because it's not good for your health. He will make something that appears to be a temporary release, something that you want to go to for full release. But Satan is a liar. It ends up in the misery, and it ends up in a problem. What does a good job he does, excuse me, a good job of selling his lies to us. You can see how people are swayed by a lie. Many times you will listen to perhaps an advertisement on TV, and it will say to you, if you take this product, you will have a wonderful experience. If you buy the product and it doesn't change your experience at all, it doesn't do anything. I remember when I was young, they would tell you that if you've got high karate lotion for your aftershave, boy, the girls would run toward me. Well, they probably ran away from me because it stunk. I remember getting a, uh, a aftershave lotion that was called lilac aftershave lotion. Why, I could light a match on that and it would burn for a week. It was more alcohol than anything else. And probably, if I was an alcoholic, which I was not, I would have drank some of that. The reality is this. It doesn't do what it says it's going to do. You do this and you'll get this. You do that and you will have a good time. Well, my friends, the devil is a liar, and the advertising units of the world use his techniques, or techniques to get us away from what is reality. The Bible says that sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. 
You can have all kinds of pleasure, but if it's pleasure that God says is a sin, then you will find you are further away from God than you ever were. That is death. Remember, hell is a second death. It is a separation from God. Well, sin separates you from God in the walk of faith. It does that very carefully and precisely. The grace of God, however, can give us greater joy. Going to church and being filled with the word of God can give us deliverance far more than any deliverance from any medication could give us. I believe that if more people not only learn the word of God, but assemble together and began to think God's way, they wouldn't need a lot of the medicine they need today. We are in an anxiety-ridden world. People are anxious about everything. Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Jesus has the proper way for deliverance. But we many times will escape into that which the world says is going to give us deliverance. And we find out it doesn't at all. There's the escape of pleasure. The flight into passion, appetites, and desires. The Word of God makes it very clear that assembling together on the Lord's Day is a requirement. But if I think, well, I can go and have a good time at the amusement park. I can do that or this to get myself pleasure ridden. And it won't give you any more pleasure than you can imagine a, a rock could give you. You can't get pleasure from pleasure places. Remember Pinocchio? Uh, Disney's Pinocchio. Here was Pinocchio, and he went to Pleasure Island, and Pleasure Island ended up giving him donkey ears and the donkey nose, and the kids turned into donkeys. You know, that's a message for us. We turn into wild asses when we go to those places because those places do not give us the deliverance we're looking for. Many people will drown their troubles in alcohol, but does that give them a real deliverance? Of course it doesn't. It covers it over, and often it creates more problems than it's worth. Christ is the source of our joy not alcohol, not pleasure palaces, but Christ is the source of our joy. The Word of God says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are the pleasures forevermore. I get more pleasure from coming and assembling with you folks than I ever could get by going into the world seeking the pleasures of the world. In some measure, there's nothing wrong with them unless you're replacing Christ for those pleasures. They are for a season. There is the escape of trying to find security. I, I do this and, and I say, well, if I have so much money, I'll have security. And then everything goes up and I need more money for the security I need. I create a problem and I have to find a way to secure me from the results of that problem. The Word of God makes it very clear there's no security but in Jesus Christ. Jesus is my security. Jesus is the one ha who has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will take care of you throughout your lifetime. Has not Jesus fulfilled that to this point in your life? Have you really had something that Jesus hasn't supplied you? All things are from his grace. He will pour out of heaven everything you need if you tithe to him. He says blessing upon blessing upon blessing. So if I give my tithe to Jesus, everything else is going to be taken care of. He is pouring out blessings upon those who are faithful in that realm. Money cannot buy, buy me happiness. I could have all the money in the world. 
and I'll want to commit suicide because there's no happiness in acquiring money when the money possesses me. James said this, your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and you shall eat your flesh as it were fire for you have heaped up treasures together for the last days. Remember the individual that said, Rejoice, eat, drink, and be merry. But he died the next day. He had all kinds of bonds. He was going to build more bonds. He thought that he had security in his wealth. But he wouldn't need it tomorrow because his life was going to be forfeited. Whenever I live for myself, Decay comes in and destruction whenever I live for Christ. The truth is Christ will take care of me. God will take care of me. This rich man said, I have so many goods. Now I don't have to worry about anything. He didn't even worry about his soul. And the indication is he never got to heaven all he had was a waste of time and talent. Whenever a person says, well, when I die, I hope my in-laws will give something to the church from my inheritance. I've known people that have said that to me. I, I, oh, pastor, I'm not going to put you, the church in the will because uh, I know my relatives will give something to the church. And in every case that that's been said, nothing has been given to the church after they were dead. There's a greedy spirit that comes in in many of those families. Thank God it didn't come into my family because it did go to the church as far as the percentage is concerned. There is also the attempt to escape through the use of tranquilizers. People are taking tranquilizers all the time to escape the problems of life. But you see, they don't really cause you to escape at all. You're still a bundle of nerves, a bundle of unbelief, and only coming to Christ and saying, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I need you to take care of my problems. Jesus can deliver us from all our problems. And if he doesn't, he is going to de deliver us within the problem. But tranquilizers just cover the problem. They don't deliver you from it. And that means when you come out of taking those tranquilizers, the doctor says, well, I guess we better use something stronger because you're not much better. All these things are a danger if we're not careful. Then there is the escape of self-sufficiency. I don't need God. I don't need God. I can do this on my own. It's like the little boy that says to the mother, I can walk by myself, mother, and he falls flat on his face. I cannot even walk, as the song goes, without Jesus holding my hand. I could not be a minister without Jesus holding my hand. I could not affect people on the Internet with the messages that I give daily without Jesus doing it through me. It's all Jesus. Jesus is to be glorified in everything that God does through you. And some people think they can escape through suicide. But then they have to face a God who doesn't want us, nor does he condone suicide. How will they face him if they've taken a life that only he has a right to take? The Bible declares, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. Felix the governor said, I'll hear you, Paul, another time. But there's no indication in Scripture that this governor 
ever heard Paul again and was ever saved. It is not right for us to escape through something that is temporal when we can escape to the very throne of God and have what we need. Today, my friends, it is important for us to understand that the escapes of this world, many of which I have not dealt with tonight, cannot give you what you need. You need an escape into the arms of Jesus Christ. He's waiting there for you. If you haven't received him as your Lord and Savior, embrace him by asking him to forgive your sins, come into your life, and save your soul. And if you will not do that, there is no escape for you. You shall not escape the judgment of God. If you have received Christ as your Savior and you are seeking escape in any of these other ways or any other way, stop doing that and escape into the arms of a loving and gentle God. Let us pray. Father, we ask that if anyone has not received you, they will say that prayer and they will invite you into their life to save their souls. If a Christian has gone to other escapes, show them the error of their ways and turn them, turn them, Lord God, to you that they might escape into your loving arms and have the rest that they need and can only find in Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you if you receive Christ as your Savior or you have a prayer request. Please write us, if you're in America in particular, at 40 Belvedere Street. The Bible speaks in Laconia, 40 Belvedere Street, Lakeport, New Hampshire, zip code 03246. Or email us on the internet at ourhornet2 at metricast.net. Until next week at this time, God loves you and so do we. Have a great week.